Russia's deadly invasion of Ukraine may be thousands of kilometers away, but for the huge population of Ukrainian Canadians, it's all too close to home. Nick Dunn covers the Northeast for Ontario Hubs, and he joins us now from Sudbury on how people there are reacting to the war. Hey, Nick. Hi, Jan. All right, so let's try to get a sense of the Ukrainian community here in Ontario. How would you characterize the community in Sudbury, where you are, and other parts of Ontario? Yeah, no, it's a great question. I mean, well, first of all, nationally, uh, Canada as a country has the largest uh, Ukrainian uh, population outside of uh, Ukraine and Russia. So there are very historical ties there going back to Confederation and the, uh, the, the settlement of the prairies. But uh, in Ontario, um, you know, and specifically in northern Ontario, um, you know, the, the, the community here has been foundational uh, from the early days of settlement of northern Ontario uh, in the mining industry. Um, more broadly, there are about, uh, you know, well over 300,000 people of Ukrainian origin in Ontario. So we're looking at a pretty significant uh, ethnic population here uh, in the region. But uh, regions like Sudbury, Sault Ste. Marie, Timmins, all have very large Ukrainian enclaves uh, alongside, you know, Italian American Italians rather, who had uh, settled here again from the early mining days of this uh, this province. Now, for the last few days, you were looking at how people in Sudbury are showing their support uh, for what's going on in Ukraine. Uh, what were you able to to find out? Right. Well, even before uh, the invasion, um, there was a rally held by various Ukrainian communities here. So there's the Ukrainian Senior Center, there's the Ukrainian uh, National Federation, uh, the, the Sudbury branch of it, rather, and, um, you know, St. Mary's Ukrainian Church here in Sudbury. Um, so they held a rally uh, trying to raise awareness to the uh, increased conflict uh, and militarization of the border between Ukraine and Russia uh, early February. Uh, and have been trying to raise awareness uh, for this for quite a while. But ever since the invasion hit, uh, you know, I don't think people were surprised, but nonetheless shocked. Um, so we've seen uh, quite a few donations and fundraising efforts. Uh, for example, the Ukrainian church here, uh, the Ukrainian Catholic Church, rather, has uh, raised over $20,000 already uh, for aid in Ukraine. Uh, the Ukrainian Senior Center, they normally... Uh, make uh, pierogi or pierogies as we uh, m more commonly know them, uh, cabbage rolls, um, and they will sell this, raise money. But uh, right now they're uh, putting all the efforts there and matching any donations uh, to Ukraine, also sewing flags. Um, in Sault Ste. Marie, a uh, similar situation with uh, St. Mary's Ukrainian Church there. Uh, I got off the phone with uh, Reverend Michael Hayes of uh, the church there, and there's been a large outpouring of uh, support there from the broader community, uh, even though uh, the Ukrainian church in uh, Sault Ste. Marie, he tells me, is uh, a, a rather, it's an eclectic mix of uh, different ethnicities, not just Ukrainians. Uh, so very wide support all around. And in Timmins and in the Sioux, there were also candlelight vigils held recently and plans for more rallies uh, from various organizations uh, in the region. Now, for your article, you spoke to the Ukrainian National Federation in Sudbury and spoke a little bit about how the current conflict is triggering some painful war memories for some. Tell us about that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I spoke with uh, Sonia Pechenyuk, uh, you know, who brought her uh, mother, Yaroslava Pechenyuk, um, with me and uh, gathered a few uh, members of the Ukrainian community here in Sudbury. Uh, and there was a lot of discussion around uh, the Second World War and the broader history of Ukraine. Um, you know, these aren't just pages in a history book for a lot of these people. This is embedded in family history, in traumas and difficulties that their parents or their grandparents experienced. Um, you know, and it, it's, it's not just in the war. You know, I was talking to a gentleman, Walter. Um, who told me about how various members of his family during the Soviet occupation, uh, they were considered political dissidents, uh, imprisoned. Um, so there's, there's, there, there's, a, there's a hearkening back to that time, you know, seeing an invasion now after Ukraine had established its sovereignty uh, after the collapse of the Soviet Union. And there's a real concern that we are creeping back uh, from the progress that was made in the 1990s. I actually want to pull up a, a photo of Sonia and her mother. Uh, you, you talked about her, and I, I'm curious, what was her parents' uh, sort of journey to, to, to Sudbury? How did they come to settle here? 
Right. Well, uh, when uh, Sonia's mother uh, was a child under the German occupation, uh, she was uh, taken uh, to work in a munitions factory for the Germans and uh, supposedly was told to uh, collect potatoes at night and working on the farms. So again, that, that, that there's a very tangible, difficult uh, history there that's being almost relived uh, in light of what's going on in the war. But um, Sonia's parents had uh, gathered in the United Kingdom post-war. Uh, they were concerned about potential political persecution if they were to return to Ukraine. And her father scouted out uh, you know, different places where they could settle. And uh, Canada just happened to accept uh, their uh, immigration papers before the United States and found Sudbury because there was already a, uh, a community here where they could you know, integrate slowly, learn the language, but also be familiar with uh, the culture, uh, different families, communities um, already and set themselves up here, which uh, they, they, they since have. Uh, before we circle back, uh, circle to sort of how people can help, uh, I am curious, you know, there, there does seem to be a sense of helplessness. And I know uh, in your reporting, you, you've reported on, you know, sort of this 80-year-old uh, person who, who wanted to, to fly back as well. What do you get a sense of sort of that? Right. Uh, yeah, I mean, there, there's an incredible uh, rush to try to, you know, uh, help the cause uh, within the community and even abroad. Uh, again, that was an 80-year-old uh, Canadian-born uh, Ukrainian uh, who tried to fly uh, to Ukraine, drove five hours from North Bay, but her daughter, his daughter rather, intercepted him. Uh, and he was at a uh, church ceremony uh, just on Sunday uh, here in Sudbury. Um, as far as uh, the, the broader aid effort, I mean, there are lots of uh, charitable uh, donations to everyone from the Red Cross to UNICEF, uh, various Ukrainian organizations. Um, you know, I think doing your own research to what charities you're comfortable with uh, and trust uh, is probably the um, you know, most uh, valid uh, choice there as far as uh, financial aid. But um, I've heard from the, the churches here in Sudbury, in Sault Ste. Marie, uh, from the Ukrainian hall here in Sudbury, that the entire community uh, has been calling Ukrainian and non-Ukrainian about how they can help. Um, on Sunday at 3 p.m. in Sault Ste. Marie, there's going to be a service, uh, you know, specifically for the war. Uh, the pastor there said that people are welcome of any de denomination or religion. Um, and uh, there's even the question of refugees. I mean, it's been reported that we're seeing at least a million refugees coming out from Ukraine and fleeing. Um, so I know in Sudbury there are efforts underway to get uh, workshops going with immigration experts, legal experts. Nick, really important stuff. Thank you so much for your reporting. Really appreciate it. Thanks, Jan. The Agenda with Steve Pakin is made possible through generous philanthropic contributions from viewers like you. Thank you for supporting TVO's journalism.